I will now play the audio file. Well, first I read. Addendum 1730.6 receives audio transmission. The following audio transmission was picked up on monitoring equipment of, on the morning of February 1st, 2016. The transmission, both speech and an encrypted signal that followed, has been repeating on a continuous loop since it was first detected. The contents of this transmission are accessible below. Hello, my name is Dr. Muhammad Scott, and I am a researcher within the SCP Foundation's Site-13 Temporal Studies Division. Myself and my team were abandoned within Site-13 during a recent catastrophic event, the full details of which we do not know. We are currently surrounded by hostile entities and other hazardous anomalies. Of the original 30 members of my team, only 12 remain. To any Foundation operatives listening on this channel, we are asking for assistance. Our supplies are dangerously low, as is our ammunition. Without aid, it is unlikely that we will last more than another month. Following this message will be an encrypted, adjusted VMS transmission, decipherable by standard 1980s Foundation technology. The information within that transmission will contain our location as well as we can describe it. The transmission is wired by Dead Man's switch to myself and will be played on a continuous loop until such time that I die. Please help us. Thank you. Didn't Addendum 1730.7 Updated Exploratory Memorandum In light of recent information gathered by Foundation surveillance teams, it has been deemed pertinent to once again send exploration and recovery teams into Site-13 by the order of the Overwatch Command. SCP-1730's containment procedures have been updated. Mobile Task Force Tau-5 A.K. Samsara is currently under the consideration for deployment. Details to follow. To those wondering what MTF Task Force for Tau-5 Samsara is, it's basically humans that are given the flesh of a god. And basically come demigods. Hey. That to just let's explain it before continuing on. Addendum 1730.8 Exploration and Recovery Log Transcripts Exploration Video Log Transcript Date Redacted Exploration Team Test Mobile Task Force Apollo 3 Game Wardens Subject SCP-1730 Team Lead AP-3 Ross Team Members AP-3 Houston, AP-3 Noah, AP-3 Ohalo, and AP-3 Virg, if I go. Begin log. AP-3 Ross. Radio's live. Everything good? AP-3 Virgo. Hang on. Site command. 60 seconds to insertion. AP Ross. AP3 Ross. Copy. Vigo, you good? AP3 Vigo. Yeah, I got it. AP3 Ross. Reset. AP3 Houston. We're good. AP3 Ross. Alright. Stay cool, keep your lights on, and if you see anything suspect, hit your visors and give everyone else the heads up. Remember, the internal typography of this place is unstable. If there's a pretty good chance, we'll get separated. If we do, stay put until the place stabilizes, and somebody will pick you up. Use your broadcasters if nobody is responsing. And shoot anything that moves. Unless it's one of us. 
properly. AP3 Noah. Then definitely shoot. Team laughs. Sight command. 30 seconds to insertion. AP3 Ross. Houston, you take the lead. Our information justice entrance leads down to a pretty long staircase. But there shouldn't be any other doors we encounter until we hit the bottom. So we should be more or less safe until we get there. Got it. AP3 Houston. Got it. AP3 Ross. Any other questions? Oh, hello. You're quiet back there. AP3 Ohalo. I'm good, Bass. AP3 Ross. Alright, that's what I want to hear. Site command. 10 seconds to insertion. AP3 Vigo. Here we go. Pause. Site command. Game wardens, you are clear to begin operation. AP3 Ross. Let's roll. Team enters SCP 1730. As expected, initial interior space is a long descending staircase. AP3 Houston takes lead. Site command. Team, we're monitoring you from here. But let us know if you hear, see, or any, or see or experience anything unexpected. AP3 Ross. Got me. Team descends for three minutes. Interior of SCP-1730 is unlit, with only luminescent coming from the shoulder-mounted lights of MTF AP-3. AP-3 Ross. How are we looking? AP-3 Houston. Pretty good, we... I see a door up here, on a landing. AP3 Vigo. I see it. AP3 Ross. Alright, that's unfortunate. A hollow. Keep... Noah, keep an eye on our backs when we pass it. Hang on. Team stops at the landing. AP3 Houston tries the door, but it is locked. AP3 Ohalo. There's air blowing under the door here. See where the dust is kicked up? AP3 Ross. Yeah, I go. Let's see that thermal camera. AP3 Vigo. Alright, hang on. Here it is. 10 seconds of silence. AP3 Ross. Yeah, no, I don't. Radio static. Not even going to begin to fuck with that. Let's keep going. Site command. Team lead. You copy? Is everything alright? AP3 Ross. Uh, yeah. We're good. Still descending. Site command. Affirmative. Just got some static. Wanted to make sure you were good. Team continues to descend for three more minutes. AP3 Ohalo. Light. Look. AP3 Ross. Yeah. Man, there's a light up ahead. Might be our exit. Eyes open. Team descends for two minutes. AP3 Noah. Shit. AP3 Vigo. Whoa, what the fuck is that? AP3 Ross. God damn it. Alright, Command. Be advised that the bottom of the stairwell is just missing. I don't know where the light we saw is coming from, but if we go down about three more steps, we're in a sort of void. I don't see a bottom to it. Sight Command. Copy that. Hang tight, team. We're taking a look at this. AP3 Ohalo. What if we drop something in it to see how far it goes? AP3 Fico. I mean, 
I can, I can see how far it goes. And it sort of looks like forever. AP3 Ohado shrugs. Site command. Game wardens, go ahead and proceed back up. We'll see about another insertion point. AP3 Houston. Damn it. AP3 Ross. It's alright, we'll just... AP3 Vigo. Ross, look, it's not a void, it's a liquid. It's just not reflecting light, like, at all. It's pitch black. AP3 Houston. Looks sort of like water. AP3 Ross. Hang on. Yeah, we're not gonna fuck with that either. Command, how far are we to the bottom of the stairwell? Site command. One moment. You're about 15 meters below where we expected the stairwell to end. AP3 Ross. Stellar. The typography is off here. Let's head back up a ways and see if we can find a different exit. Site command. Team lead, hold position for a moment. We're trying to determine your location right now. AP3 Noah. Hey, Chief. AP3 Ross. Hold on. AP3 Noah. No, look up, it's... AP3 Ross. Shut up. I'm... AP3 Houston. Oh, fuck, it's rising. AP3 Ross. Shit. Alright, boys. Time to go. Fuck. Black Wickwood begins to quickly rise behind MTF AP3. Team quickly... The team moves quickly up the stairwell in relative silence. AP3 Vigo. It's gaining on us. Fuck. Come on. AP3 Houston. Jesus Christ, I... AP3 Ohalo. Houston, grab him. Ross, help. AP3 Ross. Shit. Don't. AP3 Houston. My legs. Fuck, fuck, fuck. Fuck my way. My legs. I. P3 Noah. There's another door up here. Harry! AP3 Ross. Hang on. Team enters the door to the next landing. Door is slammed closed. AP3 Noah. Holy Jesus, what happened to his legs? P3 Ross. Shit, Houston, how are you? P3 Houston. I, uh. Wait. P3 Vigo. What? Site command. What's happening? Do you read us? P3 Ross. Yes. Sorry, command. That all happened quickly. Houston fell coming up to the stairs and got his legs covered in that stuff. And now they're just gone. One clean cut. Like they weren't there. AP3 Houston. I can actually still feed them, guys. Like, I can see they're not there, but it doesn't hurt. And I think I can stand up. AP3 Ohalo. What the fuck? AP3 Houston proceeds to stand up. He is missing his legs from the knees down, but appears to be floating as if they were still there. AP3 Vigo waves his hand underneath Houston's legs, which passes through the space and unimpended. AP3 no- Uh... AP3 Ross. Alright, so there's that. You aren't hurting Houston? AP3 Houston. Nothing feels different. P3 Ross. Okay, that's fucking crazy. Command, do you know anything about this? Site command. Negative. 
B3 Ross. All right, let's keep going. Then command. It looks like we're we're in a maintenance hallway or something similar. We've got pipes running up and down the walls and gate gauge as such. It's pretty warm here. B3 Ohalo. There on a the wall. What happened to Site 13? B3 Ross. It's a recurring phrase that keeps sh showing up written on the walls here. Command. Do we not know? That's not a meme. Site to command. It isn't. None of the studies we ran uncovered any anomalous effects related to that phrase. We're still not sure why we keep finding it, though. AP3 Ross. Noted. Down this hall. Team continues in silence for four minutes. During this time, AP3 Noah's camera set disconnects suddenly. This information was not promptly related related to the task force. AP3 Houston. There's something up ahead, see? There, at the corner. AP3 Vigo. Is that a person? AP3 Ross. Approach with caution. Safety's off. Team approaches the target in silence. Upon, upon reaching the target, video feed shows a severely disfigured, rotting human corpse. Age unknown, partially conjoined to the wall behind it. Several other spatial distortions are evident nearby, such as the ceiling and wall appearing to pull back into each other. But this is unnoticed by AP3. AP3 Ross. Ah, shit. Good to finally see a familiar face. Guys, it's just Zachary. AP3 Ohalo. Thank God. Zachary, how did you get down here? Silence. AP3 Houston. Us too, man. This place is fucked up. Look at my fucking legs, man. Look at this shit. Sight Command. Team, le team lead, please be advised that you are under the effects of a powerful cognito hazard. We are attempting to unlo upload a filter to your scramble visors. One moment. AP3 FICO. Nah, command, it's alright. It's just Zachary. We go way back, don't we, buddy? AP3 FICO playfully punches the corpse, dislodging its jaw. The corpse does not respond. AP3 Ross. Zachary. We're looking for some other people trapped in here. Do you know how to get to the lower levels? Silence. AP3 Ohalo. Shit. AP3 Ross. Okay, okay. So wait, what's below that? Silence. AP3 Ross. Uh huh. Silence. AP3 Houston. Shit, he's right. Where's Noah? The team turns and AP3 Noah is not seen. AP3 Ross. Ah, shit. Zachary, stay here. Noah, do you read me? Noah, it's Ross. Do you hear me at all? Command, where the fuck is Noah? Sight command. That is, that's uncertain. Team lead, be advised. The upload is complete. Please restart your visors for the filter to take effect. Team restarts their visors. AP dash AP three Ross. There we go. What was it that? Oh, gross! Man, there's a body in the wall down here. So it's been fused into it or something. Our visors are ticking like crazy too. Site command. Acknowledged. Team lead. Proceed. AP-3 Houston. Wait, look back there. Y you see shimmering. AP-3 Vigo. Is that gas? It looks like a gas leak. 
AP3 Ohalo. No, look at the floor. Look behind it. Fuck, fuck. AP3 Houston. Shit. No, a shit. Approaching MTF AP3 is a shimmering, transparent humanoid construct, apparently the source of the spatial anomalies in this area. As his feet touch the ground, the floor begins to warp within space around him, stabilizing after the entity passes by. MTF AP Noah is visible hanging by the entity, though the nature of this agent is uncertain. As a spatial anomaly, he is caught in appears to be extremely severe, and very few of his features can be made out. Noah is seen attempting to move slightly, but continues to be twisted by the anomaly as it moves. AP3 Ross Fucking shoot it, goddammit! Open, open fucking fire, shit! MTF AP3 fires on the entity. As the bullets approach, their trajectory changes in a twist and spin around, and not around the entity before falling harmless on the floor or lodging in the ceiling. AP3 Ohalo. This isn't working, Chief. We. AP3 Vigo. Fucking arm, shit! AP3 Vigo is seen turning and attempting to pull away from an unseen force. From AP3 Ohalo's camera, a long, shimmering, transparent appendage is seen stretching towards AP3 Vigo, extracting the wall closest to it as it moves. It wraps around AP3 Vigo's left arm, which begins to visibly distort. Vigo screams. AP3 Ross. Houston, the anchor. AP3 Houston. Oh, yeah. AP3 Houston produces a miniature portable sprint and reality anchor, which he powers on and, lo and lobs towards the entity. There is a flash of red light, and for a split second, the entity becomes visible as an extremely disfigured, grotesquely elongated humanoid, which exists for only a second before it the spatial distortions surrounding it are anchored and violently reset, creating a massive pressure wave in the confined space. The team is momentarily incapacitated. P3 Vigo. Oh, my arm. P3 Vigo's left arm is bright red, but otherwise unscathed. P3 Ohalo assesses it. AP3 Ohalo. The color will go away. It's just the anchor cooling down. You good? AP3 Vigo. Yeah, I'm alright. Thanks. AP3 Ross. Jesus, Noah. Noah, are you there? Silence. AP3 Ross. Can any of you see Noah? AP3 Vigo. Ross. Here. Look. In the wall. As dust clears, AP3 Noah becomes visible, partially fused with the walls, ceiling, and floor. Across 10 meters of hallway, the agent is unmoving. AP3 Houston, wretches. AP3 Ohalo, indistinct muttering. AP3 Ross, God, command. Do you read me? Hello? Site command. We read you, team lead. AP3 Ross. We lost Noah. He's in the wall. Do you want us to proceed? Site command. One moment. Silence. Site command. Team lead, do you feel as if returning to the surface would be more dangerous than continuing your mission? AP3 Ross. I, I have no f way of knowing that. We have no way of knowing what's in here. Everything in here is so fucked. It's incredible. I don't even know if we can get back. If we wanted to. None of the other teams have, have they? Site command. That is correct. AP3 Ross. 
honestly, whatever happens down here can't be any worse than whatever we see on our way back. It probably doesn't make a difference. Whatever, let's keep going. Site Command. Affirmative. Team Lead. We are preparing another Team 8 to evacuate in the event that you reach your target. Searching time is in four hours. AP3 Ross. You're sending another task, task force in here. What idiots volunteered for that gig? Site Command. Samsara. AP3 Ross. Uh oh. Alright, cool. I copy. Team continues on for a short time, unimpeded. They pass through several other areas, including a ransacked infirmary, a cafeteria space melted into slag, and a wing of containment units identified as Olympia class. They are no less than 100 meters in height. Eventually, the team enters a room off the main hallway that appears to be the telecommunications center. A single television is illuminated on the wall across from them. AP3 Houston. This is weird. AP3 Ross. Stay cool, guys. Search this room. See if there's anything we can collect that they could use topside. AP3 Bygo. These, these terminals have power. I collect the backup. There's a sound on the other end of the room, like static. A hollow in Houston moved towards the illuminated television. AP3 Ohalo. Is something broadcasting through this? The screen flickers and an image appears. The interior of a standard containment cell is shown. Though it is devoid of any comforts or belongings, a single red light behind the camera is on, poorly illuminating the space. A long figure is huddled, huddled in the corner. AP3 Houston. Hang on. Is that? AP3 Ohalo. Holy shit, it is. AP3 Ross. What is it? AP3 Houston. It's Bobble the fucking clown. At the mention of the name, the figure in the corner looks towards the camera. Unidentified figure. What? What do you want? Who is it? AP3 Ross. Jesus. My name is Ephraim Ross. I'm an agent with the... Actually, hang on. Who are you? The figure shifts sideways and more of its body becomes visible through the darkness. The red light illuminates its eyes, though little else of the figure can be made out. Unidentified figure. Hmm, you're different. You smell different. You know I can smell you, even from here. You don't know that, though. They did, but you're not like them. They went great lengths to figure that out. They know, they know, they know. They will know. <laughs> AP3 Ross. You're Bobble the Clown. Yeah. The figure slides slowly across the wall of the cell. Just out of range of the red light, its movements are noticeably erratic. It comes closer to the camera. Unidentified figure. They had a number for me once when I was Bobble. But your friends didn't like the number, so I identif so we identified with the numbers. Mmm, I am not Bobble, but I am the thing that used to be Bobble. You're not... You're not where you're supposed to be, gun buddy. You don't match the air in here. You're out of place just like I am. Just like we were. AP3 Ross. Uh-huh. What happened here? Unidentified figure. Teddy Emerson played a tricky little game with the strings of the universe. He walked on them like a tightrope and was surprised when he fell. Tricky little Emerson. Didn't just want boxes. No, 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 no. 
He wanted bags full of ideas. Ideas like pain, horror, death. We were tired of stacking those boxes on a string and broke the whole thing. We came tumbling down with them. <laughs> AP3 Ross. How many other entities are in here? What else do you know? Unidentified figure. How many? <laughs> How many entities are solved by Site 13? <laughs> you silly. You silly, silly out of place, boy. Silly little boy. Everything made its way into Site-13, if the Foundation could find it, and the Coalition couldn't catch it. It was fed into the meat grinder down there. Everything. They mulched us all. There was nothing to gain. Some got lucky. Baba got lucky. Stuff in a funny box to play and played with. Toys with. Ex toyed with. Experimented with. To see what sounds they made when he wanted to die. Others was not so lucky. <laughs> they burned the library, you know. Held it upside down in a can of soup. Not the contents. Run out of the furnace and burn the whole place up. They did other things too. Worse things. Danny Emerson liked it. We watched it all every time. Got his jollies off watching it. <laughs> AP3 Ross. AP3 Ross. What worse things? The unidentified figure approached the camera and comes fully into view, illuminated by the red light. A significant portion of its body is distorted by video static that moves as, as it moves. The static appears to be cutting into the tissue of the figure's body, creating large lacerations that ooze a dark yellow liquid. As it moves, the figure appears to be slowing off large portions of its mass which are replaced with static. Half of his face slops off as it nears the camera, and one eye becomes shrouded in static. Unidenti unidentified figure. Every worse thing. AP3 Vigo. Chief, we're picking something up on the radio. I think it's a survivor signal. You must be getting close. AP3 Ross. Alright, let's keep moving. Unidentif unidentified figure. Have fun, boys. Don't let the dead bugs bite. <laughs> if you see Daddy Anderson down there, rape him to death for me. AP3 team passes out of the town communications room and into the main hallway. Following the strength of the signal discovered by AP3 Vigo, they near an area that appears to be a cryogenic containment unit, similar to those utilized in the defunct cryogenics Y Wing of Site 19. As they pass through this area, command loses the signal of each member of the team, with only intermittent static being broadcast. This continues for 30 minutes before a signal is received again. AP3 Houston. Command! Command! Are you there? Do you read me? Snipe command. Houston, we read you. Are you alright? Is everyone alright? AP3 Houston. Oh, shit. Thank God. We've been trying to reach you forever. Yeah, we found the survivors. They're holed up down here. I don't... Uh, here in... I don't know what you call this place. But it's not conductive to habitation. We're looking at 20, maybe 30 people. We found some other agents of ours, too. A few mall rats and a guy from Travelers. They all ended up down here. Site Command. Are you prepared to evac? AP3 Houston. Uh, yeah, so that's not gonna happen the way you think. Not the way I think we wanted to. Not currently. It's a whole lot worse here than we anticipated. Command, I don't know how they ever lock some of this shit up. But suffice to say, 
that every single containment cell is broken open. And this shit is real. Like, really real. We keep hearing things down the halls nearby. I think whatever is down there is looking for us. I think they're angry. If they find us, we don't have enough bullets to keep them down. Let alone get these people out. Site command. Where's where's Ross? AP3 Houston. He's trying to get some defenses ready with the others in case they come tonight. It's not looking good, you know. I don't know if you guys have a backup plan, but we'll take any ideas. Site command. How long have you been down there? AP3 Houston. Uh, maybe three days? Site command. Affirmative. Apollo 3 team, be advised that, you're, that we are activating and asserting Tau 5 for rescue and recovery. AP3 Houston. Fuck yes. Tell them to hurry. Extraction and recovery video log transcript. Date redacted. Exploration team, mobile task force, Tau 5, Sansara. Subject, SCP-1730. Team lead, T-5, Arantu. Team members, T-5, Monru, T-5, Onru, T-5, Nanku. Notes. The following is an audible slash video transcript of, of an extraction and recovery mission carried out by the members of Mobile Task Force Tau 5 Samsara after contact by MTF AP3 Game of Wardens with human survivors within SCP-1730. The AP3 team had requested assistance in extracting the survivors due to large numbers of hostile entities within the site. Each member of MTF Tau 5 was outfitted with a number of cybernetic enhancements per the specification of their design, including arm mounted incendiary cannons, shock absorbing leg extensions, heat resistant plating, built in scrambled adaptations within the eyes, and others. Tau 5's assertion point was a drainage gate near a secondary entrance that the AP 3 team had inserted through. Begin log. Tau 5, Arantu. We're plugging in. Site command. Do you hear me? Site command. We do. 60 seconds to insertion. Tau, Tau 5, Nanku. So, how dangerous should this mission be considered? Tau 5, Monru. Not a single person they sent in has come out yet. Considerably. Tau 5, Nanku. Acknowledge. This should be engaging. Tau 5, Arantu. Team, check your optics. Last thing we need is somebody succumbing to a mimetic hazard. Tau 5, Nanku. Understood. I'm good. Tau 5, Monru. Also good. Tau 5, Anru. I'm good. Tau 5, Arantu. Good. Remember, all we're looking to do here is extract the survivors. We're not attempting to contain anything, so you see something nasty, put it down. Tau 5, Nunk. As always, Tau 5, I don't need to be convinced. Site command. Team, you are about... You are 30 seconds to insertion. Site command. 10 seconds to insertion. Site command. Tau 5, you are clear to begin extraction and recovery. Tau 5, Arantu. Let's go. Tau 5 team enters SCP-1730 through the drainage gate under the secondary office structure. Each team member activates their shoulder-mounted lamp, illuminating the tunnel. After a short time, the team reaches another gate. Several large drainage pipes are visible behind the gate. Tau 5, Monroe. Look, up against the gate. Bodies. No fewer than 20 charred humanoid forms in varying stages of destruction are pushed up against the bottom of the gate. Several arms are pushed through the gate and are reaching out towards the tunnel. Tau 
Tower 5 Nanku. These look very burned. Where do you think they came from? Tower 5 Arantu. I had to say, I can't imagine they would they would have made it, it far in this condition. Tower 5 Monroe. There's an incinerator near here, right? Near the body pit we keep hearing about? Maybe they came from there. Tower 5 Nanku. Uh, Tower 5 Nanku. An incinerator? Tower 5 Arantu. As good as a place to start as any, let's get those pipes there. Tau 5 team cuts through the gate and scales the wall behind it to the lar largest of three drainage pipes. Ting continues on for a short time. Tau 5 en route. The temperature is rising. Tau 5 Arantu. I notice it as well. We must be getting close. Tau 5 Munru. We're descending right now, too. This is strange. Shouldn't a drainage pipe run out? That in? Tau 5 Nanku. Maybe. Maybe it's affected by the topographical and abnormalities. Tau 5 Arantu. Likely. Tau 5 Onru. Arantu, the wall is weak here. I can hear echoing from the other side of it. Tau 5 Arantu. What's over there? Tau 5 Onru. Hang on. Hallway, I think. Tau 5 Arantu. I see. Alright. We'll split up here. Munru, you, and Nanku see where this tunnel leads out. Anru and I will go through this wall and see what's on the other side. Tau 5 Nanku. And if we get killed? Tau 5 Arantu. Don't get killed. Tau 5 Naku. Understood. Tau 5 team splits up with Tau 5 Naku and Munru following drainage pipe towards the source of the heat. And Tau 5 Arantu and Anru going through the thin wall to the hallway beyond. Arantu and Anru manage to break down the concrete wall between the drainage pipe and hallway beyond. Within the hallway, there are several bare offices, barely lit up by dim overhead lights. The entire area appears to have been abandoned for some time. Irantu and Anru look for an elevator on stair, stair access, but find nothing. After a short time, Anru finds a door that, op that opens into a control room. A large glass obfuscation window is obscured by some dark material. Many of the controls in this room had been destroyed. Tau 5 Anru. This is the control room for the incinerator, see? It says incinerator number 1. Over there and below it, it says body pick access below. Tau 5 Arantu. I never heard of a furnace that needs its own control room. What's blocking the window here? Blast shields? Tau 5 Anru. No. No. These are bodies. And garbage. Refuse. Congealed and flagulated. Look, you can see the faces. Tau 5 Arantu. I see it. Our intel said that one of the engineers had blocked up the drainage pipes out of, out of here. Naku and Monroe are probably gonna go, going to run into that. I wonder if there's another way down from here. I thought we'd be able to go down through the incinerator. Tau 5 Anru. Hang on. Anru proceeds to look over the controls on a relatively undamaged controller near the observation window. As she does, Nanku and Manru appear at the door. Tau 5 Manru. It's blocked. Something has turned the end of, the, of that pipe into slag. We try to punch through it, but it's pretty thick. Tau 5 Nanku. I broke my hand on it. Look. Holds up her hand, which is undamaged. It was broken, I mean. Tau 5, Arantu. Quiet. Anru is looking for something. Tau 5, Anru. Got it. Anru throws a large switch and turns several nearby knobs. There is an immense groaning sound and a mass in front of the, of the window begins to spin slowly. 
Now five Nanku. Interesting. There is a jolt as if something had broke has broken free, and a mass begins to spin rapidly and slowly descend. There's a distinct sound of a turbine spooling up. The team's internal temperature gauges begin to register a steady increase in heat. Tail 5 Munro. It's dropping. Look down there, see? The mass has, has cleared the window, revealing a massive centrical chamber on the other side, at least 300 meters in diameter, and roughly 400 meters deep. At the center of the chamber is a massive shaft extending the full height of the chamber attached to several large turbines as the turbines spin no matter the matter within the chamber is turned into a slurry near the top of the chamber are several pilot lights large holes are present around the outside of the chamber tail 5 onru all right and then onru throws another switch and the and the pilot lights are ignited Enormous streaks of fire cascade down from the ceiling of the chamber, scorching the mass below. Additional jets of flame begin to emit from the walls of the chamber. Mm -hmm. Now five are on two. Look, down near the bottom, there's a Sulai gate that looks like it's leading away from here. Over there, see? Can you get that door open? Tau five on real. Yes. Got it. A large circular door opens near the bottom of the pit, above the level of the matter within. Tower 5, Monru. Excellent. Though, I don't... I still don't know how you think we're going to get in there. The pipe is black. Naku extends her arm and fires several rounds of... from a wrist-mounted projectile weapon at the glass window in front of them. The glass cracks and shatters, exposing the room around them to the heat of the chamber. Tau 5 Monru, straightforward. Tau 5 Nanku, one does what one can. The team enters the incinerator and jumps down onto the ledge below, near another drainage pipe. They make their way through the vast chamber, avoiding the spinning blades and ever descending biological slurry around them. Tau 5 Manru. Something unpleasant took place here. Tau 5 Nanku. Oh? Tau 5 Manru. Yes, in fact. All of this has to be draining somewhere, likely out below us. Through one of the of those fissures. Tau 5 are on two. We won't have time to find out. We'll follow this pipe down and see where it goes. Team enters the open door and descends down a drainage pipe, a short distance before it empties into a large cistern. The team enters the cistern, which is lit from above by a small, large, glowing plant-like structure. Tau five Nanku. Interesting. What do you think that is? Tau five Anru. I, I don't know. The sound of their voices, the growing structure begins to shake slowly, and thousands of glowing spinning pods are released from its body. As they fall, they brightly illuminate the entire chamber. Tau 5 Monroe. Look, the shadows! The glowing pods create vaguely humanoid shadows on the walls of the cistern, which act in an anomalous manner. These shadows appear to reach their hands up or forward, as if toward the team. As the pods reach the slurry below, they extinguish and the shadows disappear. Tau 5 Arantu. Alright, which way do we go? Tau 5 Monru. This is the drainage pipe leading away from the incinerator. The incinerator is underneath the power station, which is the east of the compound. So, far as we can tell, we need to go northwest from there. So, hang on, look over there. Tau 5 Nanku. At what? Tau 5 Munru. At the wall, something is seeping through it. Was that there before? Tau 5 Anru. No. Tau 5 Arantu. It's black and shiny and definitely seeping. Something is pushing through. 
to have five nanku. What does that mean? What is it? Drainage? To have five Monroe. Unlikely. It's probably some runoff from reactor or to have five Monroe. No, it's blood. It's leeches. To have five around two. What? To have five unrun Unru. Luck. Unru points at the spot on the wall, illuminated by their shoulder mounted lamps. At the spot, a thick flow of black li liquid is seeping through the cracks in the wall. And something small is wriggling within the crack. The team zooms in on the spot, revealing a small, right, rhythmically writhing leech, pushing its way through the spot. It breaks through and falls to the ground. Tau 5 Nanku. Ha! Huh, it's a leech. What does that mean? Tau 5 Monru. Nothing good. Small leech moves towards the biological slurry at the, their feet and begins to ingest it. As it does, the leech slowly begins to grow in size. Tau 5 Munru. Lure them in the wall. They're pushing through. Team looks back toward the wall where several spouts of black fluid are beginning to pour, pour through the various cracks along its surface. Several more small leeches are squirming through those through these cracks. Tau 5 around 2. Anru, what do you see? Tau 5 Anru. There's something below us. It's huge. Covering other people's blood. Reaching up towards us. These are like fingers. that all They all communicate back to the host. The... Bring me a leech. Tau 5 Manru. What? Tau 5 Nanku. You're kidding. Tau 5 Anru. No, bring me one. They're telepathic. They're communicating that way. I need a leech. Iranto moves across the room before grabbing a leech off the ground. As he pulls it away from the liquid, it struggles and squirms, biting several large chunks out of his hand. Tau 5 Arantu. Peculiar. Here. Tau 5 Anru. Alright, one moment. Anru extends her left hand towards the leech, which opens up to reveal a series of long, delicate, metallic rods and pointed tips. She maneuvers the rods on, into the flesh of the creature, near the base of the brain. Tau 5, Anru. There, let's see. They heard the incinerator activate. They're hungry. They're coming up here to eat. A lot of them. The house is down below us, but I can't see that far down. If I look at the neural activity of the entire network of entities, I can map out the areas they're in. Let's see if I can do something with that. There we go. You should all have it on your retinas now. Tau 5 Arantu. Clever. Tau 5 Nanku. So we're looking at a map? It seems too distorted to be a map. Tau 5 Arantu. Uh, Tau 5 Anru. Ongoing topographical changes means that despite the changes in the structure of the site, it is all still lo located within our, our local reality. It's just unstable. Tau 5 Munru. Do we know where this thresher device is? Tau 5 Anru. Probably something to do with this section here. You follow a logical structural design plan based on the, the evidence provided in this map. There should be a whole extra wing here. But there aren't any leeches down that way. Yes. I can see a conduit running to that area. That's where a thresher machine is. Silence. Tau 5 run 2. What about our recovery? Tau 5 Anru. This area here. Several corridors lead to a large research wing, but most of them have been blocked off. Every now and then, one of the ends of the network goes dark here. The survivors are in there. Tau 5 Arantu. What's the fastest way in from where we're at now? 
Tell five or on two. But god damn it. Tell five on real. One moment. Three paths to choose from. Each with different potential hazards. The first takes us further down this pipeline until we reach a waste treatment faculty within the plant. This is the longest route. But from that, the facility is fairly direct shot towards the survivors. The second pass drops us into a cistern below this, which leads us directly to the large chamber here. The leech is in there. I can hear it right now. It's wondering why one hasn't come back. Tau 5 Arantu. And the third? Tau 5 Arant Anru. The third route takes us through the area here. Which is, which is, uh, which is clear. I can hear the leeches as, as they move around the site. They are noisy, uncoordinated, acting on impulse without much finesse. But in this area, they have all very, very quiet. They can go in and out for something, but they do it very, very quietly. Tau 5 Nanku. Look at this leech. It's the size of a cat already. Tau 5 Monru. Are there any other, other entities in there? Tau 5 Anru. I can't tell. The leeches follow a single path in and a single path out. They don't stray from it and they don't look around. Tau 5 Arantu. Which is the fastest path? The last. Uh, Tau 5 run on real. The la last one's the fastest. We follow the tunnel towards the service door and follow the staircase down the uh, staircase towards the bottom. Once we're there, there's another hallway off to the left. That takes us past the area, or through it, maybe. And on the other side is the back entrance to, the re to our research wing. Tau 5 or on 2. Alright, this one we'll take then. Tau 5 Nanku. Shame. Here I thought we'd be shooting leeches. Tau 5 Arantu. You have plenty of chances too on your way out. We need to get these people out quickly. Anru, does it feel like the leeches are, are trying to get into the wing where the survivors are? Tau 5 Anru. Yes, there is plenty of blood in this site. But not all of it is still warm. They'll be coming out, coming for them soon. Team leaves cistern and follows drainage pipe west. Eventually, the team reaches a service door lit up by a single fl flickering lamp. Tau 5, Munru. There's something written on this door. Blood. Tau 5, Nanku. Here on the, on the wall, too. Look, what's it written in? Tau 5, Arantu. Wait. Tau 5, Anru. Look! Anru amplifies her shoulder mounted spotlight, illuminating the entire wall of the tunnel. The word blood is repeated over and over, sprawled across the surface of the wall in a thick black substance. Anru turns left, illuminating several dissociated corpses in a corner at the end of the tunnel, all of which are covered in and, and seeping the same fluid. Tau 5, Nanku. Unsettling. Tau 5, Arantu. Come on, don't waste time. The team enters the service door, revealing a partial staircase. The stairs above them are intact, but the stairs below have been destroyed. The walls of the stairwell are coated in cracks, through which see seeps the black liquid. Monor lights a flare and drops it, and the team watches it fall. After a short time, the flare lands with a slight splash, revealing the floor below. Team 5 Nanku. How large is this site? Team 5 Anru. Site 19 has at least 50 underground floors, and no fewer than 80 individual wings. Considering what we know about Site 13, it's like there's at least twice as many of each. If not more, the Eco's class Payment cells alone are as large as the entirety of Site 81. Tau 5 Monru, which means there could be worse things down there 
nobody has seen yet. Tower 5, Arantu. It's almost a certainty. Arantu leaps from the landing and lands near the flare. His implants absorbing the majority of the implant impact. The rest of the team follows suit. At, at the bottom of the stairwell is another door into a hallway, and the team enters it. Tower 5, Arantu. Where to now? Tower 5, Anru. About 200 meters down this hallway on the right. There are several security doors, but I think they've all been disabled. Through there is, I think, the data storage center. It's a bit, it's big and lined with fence that lead to the cooling to towers at the surface. Where do, where do the leech, leeches, oh wait, sorry. Tau 5, Monru, where do the leeches start acting strange? Tau 5, Monru, in there. Tau 5, Monru, wonderful. Team moves down the hallway, Nanku, at point flanked by Anru and Monru and Rantu, watching the rear. As they pass, they check each other to see if they are locked. Most doors lead to network maintenance areas. Though notably, one door leads to the telecommunications room, previously visited by AP3 team. One screen on the far wall appears to have been busted from the inside out. Tau 5, Nanku. Look here. The door to the server area. Tau 5, Monru. What's the door? What's the door there? Tau 5, Rantu. It's marked as stairs to cryonics. If I had to guess, I'd say it probably goes up to the next level and is seated right on top of this room. Acts as an installation of the data center. Tau 5, Monru. Can we go through it? Tower 5, Arantu. Which is faster, Anru? Tower 5, Anru. The only way I can see is through the server room. There weren't any leeches up there. This is very strange. There are certainly plenty of access points to that room. Very strange. Tower 5, Arantu. Through the server room, then come on. Team enters through the door of the server room. They pass through several more security doors, all of which are unlocked. As they do, the external temperature drops severely and st stays steadily at roughly negative 20 degrees Celsius. Everyone two motions for the team to activate their internal heating coils, protecting their internal organs, which damage them to exposure. As the team proceeds down the hall hallways into the server room, Taofi's Nanku scramble optical implant it begins to activate signaling when an anomalous meme is being filtered out. However, Tau 5 Nanku has previously disabled the visual cue for the warning on her optical overlay, overlay instead of relying on the audio cue that accompanied the implant. The audio warning does not trigger at all. It's not until the team enters the primary server room that Tau 5 Anru realizes that no sound is audible at all, regardless of the source. Thinking at first that it might be her auditory implant, Anru removes the implant and restarts it. But after establishing that it is functioning properly, she intends to communicate this with Arantu. Arantu motions for the team to hold and attempt to discern the, the source of the anomalous influence. As they do, each other team member receives a warning that their scrambling filters are being triggered. Monroe motions towards the door entered through. But Arantu motions towards the back of the server area towards the research wing. It is during this silent discussion that Nanku noticed the movement across the large room, motioning for her teammates to stay still. Each team member begins to hear a quiet whining sound, which slowly grows in intensity. As they huddle up, Monroe notices the writing on one of the server racks written in black fluid. It says silence and then don't look. He motions towards the racks and the team acknowledges it. Around two motions for the team to move towards the far wall, and they slowly proceed between the server racks towards the back exit. Suddenly, Unruh catches the momentary glimpse of the large entity across the room, 
and stops her teammates from advancing. She looks around the corner and sees the entity again as it comes back into view. The entity is a massive, multi-limbed figure. The primary structure of the entity is a floating, cross-legged, humanoid con construct with six legs, 18 arms, and 36 forearms attached to 72 hands. Each limb moves independently, gesturing, imposing, and constant sudden jerking movements. The entity does not have a head, but instead has a large, flat, circular structure attached to its upper chest that is covered in a large number of symbols and glyphs, which glow with bright light against the entity's dark gray-brown skin. On each of the entity's arms are a gold band attached to a chain which drags the ground when not being pulled around in one of the entity's gestures. The golden bands are etched with glyphs later identified as the powerful anti kinedo hazards, though the chains are broken and the anti kinedo hazards are inactive. Most notably, a single severely emaciated, severely charged human figure is bound to the flat circular structure of the entity's head. This figure twists against its restraints and appears to be screaming, likely in a whining sound heard from the entity's muting kinedo hazard. As the entity performs its gestures, the glyphs on its head illuminates rapidly, often causing burns where the human skin comes in contact with them, creating further distress and increasing the volume of whining. Town 5 Anru also notices that some aspect of the entity is creating a severe malfunction in her optical implants. Sensing the circuits responsible for, for handling the scramble calculations. She looks away, ejecting the implants before they, they damage her retinas. The motions to the rest of the Tau 5 team to not look at the entity directly. The team acknowledges and they continue to move forward. Suddenly the whining becomes dramatically louder and begins to draw closer to the team. Monroe drops a pro proximity mine from his pack and then another a short distance away. As they flee from the entity, streaks of blue electricity begin to arc between the server racks, and the ground beneath them begins to shift, as if it was made of sand. As Naku threatens to fall, uh, fall to the ground, there's a muffled wave of pressure behind them as the first proximity mine detonates and the ground solidifies. The team turns a corner and the back entrance of the room comes into view. From above them, and they can see a hole in the ceiling exposed to the cryogenics laboratory. A briefly complicated containment cell is visible, though it is thoroughly destroyed. The team moves swiftly towards the door as white hot glyphs begin to appear on the ground beneath them and in the air around them. The team manages to duck and weave through the symbols, but Tail 5 Nanku catches her left arm on a glyph in the air and and it burst into flames. Irantu, having seen this from his position behind Nanku, fires his weapon at her shoulder, removing the arm. It falls to the ground and explodes into a cylinder. Manru reaches the door first and throws it open. Anru follows immediately afterwards. Nanku stumbles through, collapsing on the other side, and Irantu comes up last. Just before closing the door, Arantu turns to look at the entity closing in behind them, which was at this point was barely visible blur of gestures, fiery glyphs, and an inhuman whine. As the door swings close, Arantu zooms in on the humanoid figure strapped to the entity's head, enough to see the word Emerson seared into the flesh of the figure. As if from a melted patch of fabric, Arantu slams the door closed and immediately injects his optical implants. The team rushes down the corridor, away from the security door, and slowly the sound of footsteps can be heard around them. They reach a large door open space in between several hallways, and stop to catch their breath. Tab 5, Monryu. I... I don't believe I know how to respond to whatever that was. What was that? Tau 5 Arantu. 
I have no point. I've never seen anything like it. Tower 5, Anru. There was a human strapped to his head. Did you see it? Tower 5, Nanku. I did. I think it was shouting. I'll likely miss that arm later. Oh wait, pauses. Oh wait, hold on. Pauses look at the stump of her arm. I'll likely miss that arm later. Tower 5, Rontu. He'll be alright. Just be careful. Tower 5, Nanku. Like I need it anyway. And another. Besides, Nanku swings her shoulder mounted flamethrower on her left shoulder and detaches it so it hangs down to where a missing arm should be. What was I really going to use that arm for anyway? Tower 5, Arantu. Noted. Everybody alright? Tower 5, Manru. No worse for wear. Tower 5, Nanku. I'm fine. Tower 5, Anru. I'm alright too. We're here. Look. The team turns to see the hallway to their immediate east, which has bar been barricaded and filled with a substantial amount of explosive and incendiary equipment. Tower 5, Arantu. Good. He approaches the barricade. Hello? This is Tower 5 Arantu. Is anyone there? We're here to get you out. Hello? Silence. Tower 5 Munro. Maybe we're too late. Tower 5 Arantu. We're not... We're not late. Hello? Is anyone in there? Can you... There's a shuffling sound and a large wooden crate is moved slightly. A dark face can be seen in the space between the crate and the wall. Tau 5, Munru, last. Tau 5, Arant. Arant, Captain. New connection to local transmitter, transmission network. Zeta 9, Mole Rats, Captain Hollis. Zeta 9, Hollis. Boy, goddamn Power Rangers. Tell me about you. Also surveyed a team. Looks like you were hit. You've been hit with it by a train. Channel five, Munru. Something like that. Seda nine, Hollis. Well, come on then. We don't have much time left. Team moves towards the opening of the crates as Munru Naku pass through. Anru pauses. Irontu notices this and turns to look. Channel five, Anru. Irontu. Flick. Leeches. Black cracks have been gun form around the walls of the train behind them. Irregular black leeches start to fall out from them, accompanied by a thick black liquid. Tower 5, around 2. Pauses. Uh, ah. Addendum 1730.9. Extraction log transcripts. Instruction log transcript. Date redacted. Recovery team, mobile task force, Tau 5, Samsara. Exploration team, mobile task force, Apollo 3, Game Wardens, and mobile task force, Zeta 9, Mole Rats. Sub Subject, SCP-1730. Team Lee, Tau 5, Arantu, Zeta 9, Hollis, AP-3, Ross. Team members, Tau 5 Munru, Tau 5 Anru, Tau 5 Nanku, AP3 Houston, AP3 Vigo, AP3 Ohalo, Zeta 9 Moros, and Zeta 9 Willow. Notes, the following is an auto, audio and video transcript of the extraction and recovery mission carried out by the members of Tau's Mobile Task Force Tau 5 Samsara. After having made contact with the surviving members of NTF Apollo 3 and at NTF Zeta 9. Aside from the members of the Mole Task Force, the team was tasked with recovering 27 surviving members of Site 13 staff, including Dr. Muhammad Scott, a Site 13 Assistant Director of Temporal Studies. Several of these individuals have sustained significant injuries, further increasing the difficulty of extraction efforts. 
Members of Moltes Force Alpha 20, Holy Divers, were stationed above ground and were prepared to move in to aid in destruction efforts once the recovery team has escaped the lower levels of the site. Begin log. Tau 5 Arantu. Mic's on. AP3 Vigo. Are we really worried about recording all this? AP3 Ross. Hey, Vigo, shut the fuck up and do what he says. Zeta 9 Hollis. You're a lady, Power Ranger. Tau 5 Arantu. Thank you. Unru has prepared an evacuation plan. I will let her explain it. Tau 5 Anru. Our travel paths from this position are compromised by an entity in the da data center and a creature in the atrium. After speaking with Dr. Scott and his team, we devised a route that leads us far away from the current major threats as possible. Unfortunately, our information on all threats is incomplete. Even Dr. Scott was not privy to information on all contained entities within the site. As such, we should still proceed with caution it with extreme caution. This is likely already well understood. B3 Houston. Yeah, just a bit. Zeta 9 Willow. Alright, so what's the route we're taking? Tau 5 Unru. Our entry maps are here. Uh, oh wait, produces that our graphical map. Our entry routes are here and here. The largest obstacles are experiencing currently are the spatial instabilities within the lower levels of this site. On the suggestion of Dr. Scott and Captain Hollis, our route will travel to the section of the facility where the, where the thresher device is contained. This device will cause of the instabilities, and while it's not possible to completely disable the device without the risking of our lives or the lives of, of above ground personnel, we should be able to reduce the power of the device long enough for us to create a stable path to the surface. Following this route here. Slater 9 Hollis. I got lost shortly after our insertion and ended up in that room. I was attacked by a number of creatures. They were difficult to perceive, like due to some latent anti mimetic effects. I was able to escape them, but there's no doubt they're still there. That machine draws a frankly impossible amount of energy from some energy source elsewhere in the site. And those creatures I saw fed off of it. So there's that. AP, A, AP3 Figo. Why don't we send a team ahead to disable the machine and then meet up with them before heading up? <coughs> Down 5 or on 2. We will not have enough time and the probability of our success drops dramatically. If we split up our team, once the device is powered down, it is likely that we will have less than an hour to make our escape before it, it trips its fail safes and powers back up again. We will just have to make our push from there, when that it buys us enough time. AP3 Figo. Alright, cool. Tau 5 Arantu. Your assignments are as follows. Tau 5 will take point. Ball 3 will take the right and the left flanks. Zeta 9 will take up the rear. The healthiest survivors will stay near the back. And those with more, more serious injuries will be near the front near Tau 5 in the event that we are flanked or assaulted. Follow the, the typical multi force defensive assignments while allowing Tau 5 to intercept the higher threats. Tau 5 Munru. Maintain clear. Lines of communication. Tau 5 and the task force captains have channel priority. Keep chatter to a minimum. You will all have plenty of time to speak once we reach the surface. Zeta 9 Hollis. Our priority now is distracting these people and staying alive. Unless you're in Samsara, in which case, I guess you guys are free to do what, what you want. The rest of us mortals, it doesn't help us to get the Power Rangers get mulched. Since we're likely to shit out of luck if they go belly up. Tau 5 are on 2. Agreed. Does everyone understand our mission? All task force members are in agreement. Tau 5 are on 2. Acceptable. Then I'll take point. We need to move quickly. Gather your things, prepare the civilians, and we'll leave shortly. Team breaks and assemble in their formation. Civilian survivors are briefed on the mission, plan, and position in the middle of the block. 
Say the nine, Willow. Captain, at the main door. There are leashes coming under the door. Say the nine, Hollis. Shit, around two. We need it roll. Tau five around two. Agreed. Let's move out. Monroe, Naku, collapse the main door. We will exit expediently out the side. Tau five, Naku. Gladly. The block moves out of the side door towards the side hallway. Tau five, Naku, and Monroe hang back to set explosive charges around the door frame. Leashes are beginning to work their way under the door frame, and through the cracks in the walls, they st step away from the door. Naku opens her flamethrower on the leeches. Tau 5 Monru, I cannot say you're making a difference, Naku. There are likely many more leeches elsewhere. Tau 5 Naku, this is very satisfying to me. Clean as the burn leeches coming through the walls. It is delicious. Monru and Naku move quickly to join the rest of the group, which has begun moving down the, s the side hallways. As they pass through the first door, there is an explosion, and the building around them shakes. From beneath the group, a loud, uncanny screaming sound is heard. AP3 Ross. I think they know we're moving. Tau 5 around 2. Undoubtedly. The group continues this down a series of hallways towards the stairwell, continuing stopping occasionally to check for hostile entities. After a short time, Tau 5 Monroe calls a halt. Tau 5 Monroe. My optics are pinging. Strange. Move everyone back. I'll scout ahead. Tau 5 Monroe comes around the corner of the hallway, weapon drawn. His scramble optical implant highlights a dangerous meme on the wall. At the far end of the hallway, a vaguely humanoid entity. The same entity as seen during the previous remote drone exploration of SP-1730 is seen drawn on a wall with a long, curvy, curved finger. Monroe projects an image of the entity to Naku, who runs the corner behind Monroe. Tau 5 Monroe, hold. Satellite entity turns towards Monroe and Naku and opens a single white eye, which is immediately pers processed and blocked by the scramble units. This it begins to move very quickly down a hallway, changing dramatically as it moves. The entity becomes considerably larger and its long row flares out from either side, exposing additional hazards that are blocked by the scramble units. Monroe and Naku raise their weapons and fire. The creature reels backwards as, it's, as it is struck by bullets, with large holes opening across its flesh. Monroe alo reloads, loading incendiary rounds, and fires again, setting the creature on fire. As it staggers backwards, as it begins to catch madly scratch madly against the wall to the right, seemingly attempting to dig through the wall away from the gunfire. Naku takes one more shot, striking the entity in its eye, causing it to collapse to the ground. Tau 5, Arantu. Everything alright? Tau 5, Manu. Beer, shall we? Suddenly, the hallway shakes violently. The floor beneath the collapsed humanoid entity crumbles and falls away, revealing a large hole beneath the floor. Within the Hole is a long, slick black creature covered in blood red eyes and a mouth full of many rows of long, sharp teeth. As it bursts through the floor, a cascade of small leeches are propelled into the hallway. The humanoid, humanoid entity slips through the destroyed floor and falls into the mouth of the large creature, which lets out a loud scream as it devours the entity. Long, wet appendages snake into the hallway as Nanku and Monroe began to retreat. Nanku opens her flamethrower again, warding off the, the approaching smaller leeches. Zeta 9 Hollis. What's going on? Tower 5 Nanku. We will need to find a different route quickly. Tower 5 Rantu. Follow me. The group moves past the collapsed hallway as Monroe and Nanku provides cover fire. They pass through the custodial dormitory and exit into a maintenance area behind it. Tau 5, Anru. Over there, we can take this path toward the machine. Tau 5, Monru. We are right... We, we are right behind you. But I'm beginning to think that this creature is far larger than we anticipated. Tau 5, Run 2. Anru, take, take the point. We will move now. T moves down the long maintenance hallway. The hallway curves to the left, opening out into a large space full 
of loading equipment and machines. Several large loading docks are visible in the back of the room, though each one is collapsed and destroyed. Zeta 9 Hollis. Durante, the walls here here are seeping. We can't stay here long. Tell 5 around 2. One moment. Monru, Naku, how far back are you? Silence. Tell 5 around 2. Monru, Naku, please report. Tell 5 Monru. Around 2. Naku's damaged. We're not going to be able to. Gunfire. Rendezvous with you immediately. Monru, do keep us updated on your position. And I'll let you know when we can regroup. Tau 5, Arantu. Understood. The group moves to the far end of the maintenance warehouse, exiting through a pair of doors leading to the staff break room. Black fluid seeps through the walls. The group has to stop briefly to bandage up a survivor, whose wound began bleeding again. A loud screeching sound is heard nearby, and the group begins moving again. They enter into another hallway leading in the direction of the Thresher Wing. As they move for toward the hall, Anru hears a distinct sound. Tau 5 Anru. Arantu. Wings? Tau 5 Arantu. How many? Tau 5 Aran Anru. Many. More than I can count. They are very small, but there is a great multitude of them. Slater 9 Hollis. You got anything else useful, Power Girl? Tau 5 Anru. A tinkling sound. Crystal on crystal. AP3 Ross. Fuck. Crystal butterflies. It has to be that. We'll get shredded. Tau 5 around 2. Unlikely. The crew moves towards the sound, which continues to grow louder. The becomes cacophonous and sa sound that seems to be right above them. AP3 Houston. Where's that coming from? With three Ross. Steady now. Stead. Tau 5 Anru. Around to the vent. In front of them, a gr grate of a ceiling vent falls to the floor, and a cloud of sparkling cr crystal butterflies begins to fill the hallway. Aranto sees the butterflies and turns back to the group. Tau 5 Aranto. Everybody down, please! As the group drops to the ground, Rontu runs towards the cloud of butterflies. He disappears briefly. After a short moment, there is a burst of flame that arcs upward to the vent. The sound of the shattering crystal can be heard above them. As the smoke clears, Rontu becomes visible again. The majority of his flesh has been shredded by the wings of the butterflies, and his entire body is scorched. Significant amounts of flesh hang loose from his body. The skin on his back is blackened and blistened. Lustered. And a thick metal implement is now visible through the scorched flesh. Anru stands and approaches him. Tau 5 Anru, are you able to continue? Tau 5 Rantu, of course. Tau 5 Houston, F Jesus fucking Christ, man, are you alright? Tau 5 Rantu, yes, why wouldn't I be? Grit moves towards another hall, seeping with black fluid, and then another. But the third hallway is clean and relatively untouched. They ascend a short staircase, therefore coming to a stop before a thick vault door. Say to Nine Hollis. The machine is behind this door. Come out this way, but the door is sealed behind me. I don't know how to unlock it. Tell five around two. Dr. Scott, do you know how to open this door? Dr. Humat Mohammed Scott. No, I never accessed this chamber. Tau 5 or Anru. I was hoping Monru would be here. I do not think I can open this door. Suddenly there's a resounding click and the door in front of them slowly opens. A monitor next to the door illuminates and a dark room is visible on it. In the back of the room, hidden in shadows, an indistinct humanoid entity waves. Martial electronic static sound vaguely reminiscent of laughter can be heard through an unseen loudspeaker. Unidentified figure. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> oh, oh. As if in pain. Tanny, oh Tanny, it's been so long. Down here with that so long. Tanny, why did you make me hurt? <laughs> oh. 
voice fades as the screen is covered in static. The screen powers off. AP3 Ross. That's a pretty fucked up clown. Tau 5 Arantu. Come, hurry. The group enters the chamber beyond. The room is very dark, with a multitude of dim green lights visible on the walls of the room. Based on the luminescence of the lights and apparent distance of them from each other, the room appears to be several hundred meters in diameter. Near the back of the room, a tower uh, of circling green lights is visible. Zeta 9. Hollis. Hey, Power Rangers. Can you see anything in there? You have dark vision or something, yeah? My visor is shut. Tau 5 are on 2. Honor and I were forced to eject our implants after they were damaged by a powerful medic entity. AP3 Ross. My visor works. Hang on. Alright, so there's a some kind of machine near the back of the room. Under those lights. I can't really make any any of it out from here. But it's there. I don't see... Oh shit. Yeah, I do. On the ceiling there. Fuck. There are a lot of those things. Zeta 9 Hollis. What are they? AP3 Ross. Whispering. Honestly, I don't know. I can't make them out. They're definitely fucking with perception. I don't... I don't think they've seen us. Seriously, though. There must be... 500 of these things. Tau 5 Arantu. That would be more than Honor and myself can deal with. We need to make a decision. Either attempt to disable a machine without attracting our attention, or find a way to dispatch the creatures. I am, of course, willing to accept ideas. AP3 Vigo. I mean, we could blow them up. Houston has explosives. It's a, a lot of them to try to get all at once, though. Seda 9 Moros. Hang on. They're feeding on the power of the Stang, aren't they? Why don't we try and get that machine to draw a lot of power to some unnecessary system first? Then shock them. Like fixing... Like fixing when a mosquito bites you. Tau 5 Anru. Maybe, but it's more likely that... Suddenly, there was a massive disturbance beneath the chamber. To the left of the group, roughly 100 meters away, there's an explosion and the wall falls away. From within the wall emerges a long, slick black appendage covered in red eyes. The eyes open simultaneously. AP3 Houston. There's a screeching sound, and from above them, many hundreds of short, imperceptible entities fall from the ceiling. The black entity in the wall begins to lash out at the smaller entities, attempting to pull them in towards its mouth that has, appear has appeared on its front. The creatures fly towards the larger creature and begin to tear it at it with its claws. Though many are shoved into the ground, the, oh, shoved into the open mouth of the creature. Tau 5 are on 2. Huh. That works as well. Anru, get to the machine. The rest of you, get back to the hallway. We will, we will not have much time. The group retreats into the hallway outside of the large room. Anru sprints across the chamber as more and more of the smaller entities fall from the ceiling and attack the black creature. Several of them begin moving towards Anru only to be dispatched by weapon fire from Arantu. As she reaches the manual control panel of the machine, Anru inputs the information provided by her members of Dr. Scott's team. Lights around the room illuminate exposing an enormous, vastly complicated machine that encompasses the entire back wall of the room. More and more of the hostile entities peel off towards Anru, who pause to open fire of the, on those who come too close. From beneath the room, there's another disturbance, and the floor in the middle of the room falls away. Another long black entity emerges, emerges from the hole, and the floor and long tendrils snake out towards Anru. From behind around two comes gunfire. An entire AP-3 team has emerged from the door and begun firing at the entity. The creature recoils, black fluid spilling from gunshot wounds. The tendrils whip around towards them, gripping AP-3 Figo and tossing him into the air. He strikes, he strikes the wall and his body falls to the ground, where, 
where the f first black entity grabs it with its tentacle and pulls it into its mouth. Suddenly, a small black leeches begin to pour from the hole in the floor and move quickly towards Arantu. Houston and Ohalo open fire on the leeches, and Ross begins. Uh, Ross moves to pull Arantu away from the hole. As he does, he tosses an incendiary grenade into the hole and pulls Arantu to the ground. There's an explosion and flame erupts around a black entity, which rears back and flies before collapsing into the hole. From the deep below them, the group can hear a loud screaming sound, and suddenly the entire room is shaking. The other black entity retracts into the, its hole, collapsing the wall behind it as it does. The remaining creatures from the ceiling are dispatched by AP-3 and Zeta-19s. As they do, and as the room begins to shake more violently, several lights affixed to the machine in the back move, in the back begin to flash and then dim, and a the sound of something winding down is heard over the gunfire. AP-3 Ross. God damn it. I go fuck. Tau 5 Anru approaches from across the room. Tau 5 Anru, the loss of Figo is disappointing. I am sorry, but we don't have a substantial amount of time to grieve. We must keep moving. Anru, Ross, Houston, Ahalo, and Rontu leave the chamber. More rumbling is felt beneath them, and occasional loud screeching sounds punctuates the machine noise from this section of the facility. They reach a stairwell, and Houston throws the door open. AP3 Houston. Oh, fuck. What? Now five around two. What is the matter? AP3 Houston. There's nothing here. The door just opens up into nothing. It's just dark, far down as I can see. It is likely that disabling the thresher. Oh wait. Now five around two. It's likely that disabling the thresher device has altered our previous escape route. We will need to find another path to the surface. Now five around two. Yes. One moment. Munru, where are you? Tower 5, Munru. Difficult to say, unfortunately. Did we power down a machine? Tower 5, Arantu. We just did. Tower 5, Munru. Fine timing then. We were being pursued by the creature, and then suddenly there was a wall where the creature had been. The local te topography appears to have reset itself. Tower 5, Arantu. Stay in one place. We will come find you. Our escape plans. Escape begins now. Tau 5, Munru. Fantastic. Main group leaves the empty stairwell and turns back down the hallway they, they came through. Passing by the thresher access the hallway again. They turn and begin to climb the, another staircase. As they reach the top, around two pauses, and the hallway in front of them is covered in ankle height in water. So they're going to move slowly through the water, and one of the researchers behind them screams. Tau 5, Rontu, what is it? Researcher. Bodies. Fuck. Just below the surface of the water, pale humanoid, uh, pale human corpses are visible. They're going to be flowing roughly half a meter down. Tau 5, Anru. Do not attempt to look at them. You do not recognize them. Move quickly. Come on. The team hurries from the hallway. Towards another set of doors at the end, where written on the walls are the words, What happened to Site 13? And the word, What? Covered by the word, Emerson. And the words, Have we become blasphemous? Beneath that. The group proceeds without incident for a short while longer, slowly ascending as the safe routes become available. After roughly eight minutes of travel, the group enters a large mechanical garage where several pieces of large machinery sit in various states of repair. They pause to secure one of the injured survivors while Anru attempts to devise a new route. Suddenly, a loud banging sound is heard, and a piece of machinery flies across the room, slowly missing AP-3 Ross, who shouts, AP-3 Ross. Oh, fuck, where did that come from? corner of the room, a stack of mechanical parts is seen moving, rising up and self-assembling into a quasi-humanoid entity. Attached to the top of the large mechanical construct, a small 
small, crudely constructed toy robot. The entity begins to move toward them, and a voice is heard from an unknown source within the entity. Mechanical entity. <laughs> I am reborn to breathe devastation upon this petite earth. Pitiful humans, you will feel the dark stain of my never-ending torment. Small robot on top of the construct is seen waving its, its arms wildly. Tell five around two. This is annoying. Anru, get these people out. Ross to me. Mechanical entity. I am the herald of your destruction. Embrace death. Tell five around two in AP three Houston. But uh, AP three Ross Houston and Ohio. Open fire on the entity to little effect. The entity lifts another large piece of equipment and throws it at the, it toward the room, toward the group, missing them, missing them wide. A hollow throws a fragmentary grenade at, at the entity, which it catches in one of its outstretched hands and grips it tightly. The grenade explodes, shattering the creature's hand, causing it to stagger sideways. Mechanical entity, how dare you! I will tread upon. You like. Tau 5 Anru has been sprinting towards the entity. As she approaches it, she leaps into the air, sailing on top of it in a tall arc. She reaches on the top of the arc. Uh, she reaches out and grabs a small toy robot on top of the construct, causing it to collapse. As she flips towards the ground, she tosses the robot towards the wall. Robot. Robot. No! I am the Harbinger! I am... The toy robot strikes the wall and it is shattered. Tau 5, Monru. Around 2, is that you? We just heard something crashing. Tau 5, Around 2, you must be near. Stay where you are. We're, we are in route. The group moves out of the garage and towards a large atrium sec section. From around the, the corner came Tau 5, Monru, and Naku. Monroe appears to have sustained burns to his lower body, but is otherwise undamaged. Naku is missing the lower half of her jaw, and the black fluid covers the front of her bodysuit. She waves with her remaining hand as the group approaches. Tau 5, Anru. You look well. Tau 5, Monru. Immediately, morale has decreased in the group since Naku found herself unable to talk. Tau 5 Naku points at Monru with her flamethrower, seemingly forgetting she is missing an arm on that side. Realizing this, she makes an obscene gesture towards Monru with her, her remaining hand. State of 9, Hollis. This is a cute reunion, but we need to get back to this shit. How far are we from the entrance? Tau 5... Tau 5 Monru. This is the main atrium. If we follow this alley here, it will lead towards the processing station. Past that, we should find access points to the surface. Slater 9, Hollis. Exceptional. Let's get get the lead at then, and... From below them, there's a loud crashing sound and more screaming. More beneath the ground begins to buckle. Slater 9, Hollis. Fuck. Run! The group flees towards the hallway Monru had identified, but are stopped when the floor there also collapse. A plume of smoke erupts from the destroyed floor, and one researcher slips on the collapsing ground and slides into it. Tau 5 Anru leads the group away from the atrium as the floor there completely collapse. Around 2 stops to turn and look down inside the hole. Beneath the hole is an incredibly large chamber, appearing to have been dug through dozens of layers of subterranean floors. Within the chamber are many small lights look around. The outside at the bottom is a massive black mass, with several other large black masses extending from it. As he pulled away, one to see his red eyes across our eyes open across the entire mass of the creature, and hears more screaming. The group flees down the side hallway, but are pursued by a long black tendril sneaking out of the hole. 
AP3 Ross and Houston open fire on the tendrils, halting them momentarily. But they are quickly replaced by more. Standard 9 Moros has been slipping on a patch of black fluid and falling before being consumed by the ends of one of the tendrils. There are the sounds of metal crashing the ground and concrete being crushed as the structure around them heaves violently. Black leeches begin to pour out of the walls around them, and Naku opens her flamethrower at them. They round a corner and find a dead end, and turning back are confined with a large black tendril that has burst through a hole in a wall. AP3 Ohalo. Holy fuck, we're trapped. This is it, this is it. Holy fuck. Tell 5 around 2. Anru, we need another way out. Tell 5 Anru, I... I am having difficulty. I, I can... I... State of 9 Hollis. Wait, wait, I have an idea. I think I know where we are. I have an idea. Come on, you fuckers. We're not dying here. The group follows Hollis towards the descending stairwell and moves quickly down it. Tosses an accelerated grenade towards the encroaching tendrils. It smashes the door shut behind her as it explodes. Screams from down below them intensifies as they descend the stairwell. Begins to shake. Holes in the stairwell open and more leeches begin to pour out of them. As task force members open fire, as long as tendrils sneak through the holes as well, upon reaching the landing, Hollis mentions the group in the door. Seda 9 Hollis, here and here! Go, go, go! The group enters a hallway and sprints towards the other end as they do. They pass a sign on the wall that reads, Stare at the Chir Chironics. Munro notices this as they pass. Tell 5 Munro, Captain Hollis, what are you doing? Stater 9 Hollis, You're gonna have to trust me here, Blue Ranger, but I've been doing this for a long time. Tell 5 Munro, I. <laughs> okay, I think this will work. Tell 5 exits the hallway to a large observation section, and I see many large section windows with glass protectors down across them. The team stops in front of one window, overlooking a massive chamber lined with st huge steel doors. Overhead are woods, words Olympia class testing observation. Tell 5 around 2. Hollis, what do you have in mind? Say to 9 Hollis, call it a hunch. We need to get downstairs. Come on. There's a group. The group runs towards the stairwell at the end of the room and quickly descends to the main level of this wing. As they exit onto the floor of the Olympic cla Olympia class containment chamber, the walls behind them begin to buckle and leeches begin to pour out of it. Say to 9 Hollis, Pink Ranger, that panel over there, you need to get that door open. Tell 5 under. What? Say to 9 Hollis, I said open the goddamn door. Hurry. What the fuck are you waiting for? Go! Tell 5 Anura runs towards the patrol panel near one of the tall steel doors. The wall behind them continues to buckle. Say to 9 Hollis, Munru, that one. Get that one open, open too. Tell 5 Munru, yes, absolutely. Tell 5 Munru attempts to access the door controls. Say to 9 Hollis, turns towards the group. Say to 9 Hollis, Everyone else, listen to me. You civilians need to get us f get to the far end of this room as far as it goes. Just keep running. There's an access point to the power station above this part of the facility. You just need to keep climbing until you get there. Once you're there, you need to blow a wall that will get you out. But you need to hurry. Shit is about to pop off in a, in a pretty major way down here. Ross, you and your boys just fire at anything that comes out, comes, comes out of that wall. I'll tell you when we can go. Rantu? You stay with me. This is gonna get pretty messy. Tower 5 run 2. Understood. Say to 9 Hollis. Alrighty. Alright. Fucking go! Come on! The group flees down the main pathway through the chamber away from the buckling wall. Behind them, the wall finally gives way. And a gargantuan black slick entity pours into the chamber. It's at least 200 meters in height, covered in black tendrils and dark red eyes. When it sees the group, it opens a, ma a massive mouth full of rows of long yellow teeth.
The center of the mouth, a naked human woman is visible, conjoined in some way in a sort of prehensile tongue with the, with the creature. As it opens its mouth, it lets out a piercing scream and begins to move towards the group. A free available task force member opens fire on the creature, and seeing their remaining magazines and throwing every possible incendiary weapon towards it. The creature is deterred slightly, but for every place it is pierced by weapons. Fire, black liquid, and more black leeches begin to pour from its body. Several long tendrils begin to sneak towards the group of task force members. Tau 5 Anru. I have it. I have it. Captain Hollis. City 9. Hollis. Come on, dang girl. Throw the fucking thing. Tau 5 Anru steps from the control panel and runs back towards the group of the middle of the chamber as loud as the groaning is heard behind her. Her sense team says huge metal doors begin to slide open. A thick cloud of ice cold fog rolls out of the chamber, obscuring the interior from view. AP3 Ross. What's in there? Zeta 9 Hollis. Monroe, you got yours? Tau 5 Monroe. Hang on. Yeah, I think that'll do. Suddenly the door behind Monroe begins to glow bright red, then white, and then the center of it buckles and the door collapses. As Monroe hurries away from the colossal, motionless, flaming humanoid, Entity floats out of the chamber. In its unmoving hands is a huge sword. As it exits the collapsed doorway, enormous flaming wings unfurl from its back. Black creature screams and its tendrils begin to lash at this creature. As the tendrils come close, long strings of fire erupt from the sword towards them, rupturing them and sending them sending black fluid and scorched leeches flying across the room. The massive black creature screams and dozens of other tendrils fly towards the flaming humanoid. As the two engage, there's another sound, a long whining, and then suddenly the room is silent. From within the cold, foggy room, a towering, vaguely servine creature steps out into the main chamber. It's composed of a body covered in light green and cream-colored hair, a long, thick neck ending in a hairless, somewhat humanoid face, and vast, intertwined white and black antlers that pulse with shrinks of blue light. Floating above its head are nine concentric rings of glowing, rotating crystals and metallic spheres. The creature slowly steps out of the containment cell and turns to, to look at the team on the ground below. It opens its mouth and a long, droning sound is heard through the room. Around its body, several large metallic cylindrical structures appear, followed by a distinct cracking sound. It begins to step towards the team of task force members, but is stuck between, but is stuck from behind by three black tendrils that wrap around its neck. The creature lets out another drone, and suddenly the sound returns to this chamber as long streaks of fire arc across the space. The central constructs turn lengthwise and speed across the room towards the black creature, striking it in its central mass. From all around the servine entity, more and more metallic spheres appear and fly towards both the black creature and the flaming humanoid, which in turn begin to attack each other. City 9 Hollis, fucking yes! Go get him, big guy! To the team. Time to fucking go, kids! Let's go! The team begins to sprint after the group of civilians towards the far wall, as jets of fire strike the ground around them. Tau 5, Naku, reach, catches the end of the dismembered black tendril in her shoulder, throwing her off balance. She falls to the ground, firing open, openly with her weapon. She is engulfed in fire. AP3 Houston pauses briefly to turn towards her, but is grabbed by Arantu. Tau 5, Arantu. We do not have time. As they near the group of survivors, all of whom are huddled near the exit door at the end of the chamber, there is a crashing sound as they turn to see the servine entity standing up from where it had been thrown across the room. The black creature whips at it as more metallic spheres appear at the arc back towards it. There is an eruption of fire as flaming humanoid is struck by another several tendrils, which try to pull the humanoid towards the mouth of the black entity. The team reaches the survivors and quickly exits through the door. The group begins to quickly ascend the staircase within. 
Sid and I and Hollis. All right, just like I said, up. We need to go up. Over. A long, thin, electrical cylinder crashes through the wall of the stairwell, narrowly missing one of the researchers and Dr. Scott. A second cylinder comes through the wall, striking around two and blurring him as it contacts the wall behind him. As the group continues to ascend, the fire fills the stairwell below them, and another long, loud, droning sound can be heard, followed by silence and then followed by a thick, bursting sound that shakes the entire facility. The group reaches a landing and begins to move towards another staircase at the end of the hallway. Sadie and I and Hollis hangs behind. Tab 5, Monroe. What are you doing? Sadie and I and Hollis. Give me some time and something else. I think, get these people out of here. Go! Tau 5, Monroe. I can stay behind. Hollis, your life is finite. Sadie and I and Hollis. Yeah, yeah, I get the spell, spell, Power Ranger. But right now, you need to get these people out of here. Let me do my thing, alright? I'll catch up with you later. Tau 5, Monroe. I understand. Good looking out, Hollis. Sid and I and Hollis. <laughs> you want to sound like a person there for a second, Munru. Sid and I and Hollis runs aw away from the group. Tau, Tau 5 Munru catches up with the rest of the group, who reach another staircase and begin to ascend. In the next ten minutes, the group continues to ascend through the facility, several times narrowly avoiding debris and falling rumble as the lower levels of the site begin to cla uh, collapse. The sounds of these entities below continue to be heard several times as the, cre the creatures become visible through the large gaps of the in the walls or floors. At one point, AP3 Ross catches sight of an unmoving flamino humanoid, nearly completely covered in metal, as long streaks of fire burst through the open seams in its encasement. Shortly afterwards, there is a two-minute break in all foot video footage, following by a shot of the head of a servine creature crashing smashing through a wall in front of the group as they turn to run away from it they head towards them two researchers are instantly transmuted in hexagonal columns and of unknown yellow green material after a short time longer ap3 ross picks up the, a signal from site command site command team laid this is site command do you read us ap3 ross holy fuck yes yeah i do do you hear me Site command, we do. We have... We do. You have appeared on our geolocating systems. Frost, you're not far from the exit. Where is Captain Hollis and Aruntu? AP3 Hollis. Aruntu is dead. Hollis, she ran off a while back. We haven't seen her since then. Site command, understood. What about the rest? AP3 Hollis. Uh, AP3 Ross. We suffered some casualties. Some... Gunfire. Fuck. We lost a few of the civilians, and Vigo, and a few others. It's very bad in here right now. Command, we're gonna need all the help we can get. We, Munru, where's Anru? Tower 5, Munru. She, uh, she was behind us. Where is she? Say, Command, don't worry about that now. We're marking an extraction point on your visor. The extraction team is waiting for you there. We're gonna get you all out. The group hurries towards the extraction point as the site continues to collapse around them. Above ground aerial surveillance captures footage of a large of large sections of the site sliding into the ground. Smoke beginning to billow from them from the power station and nearby mechanical facilities. Just a flame become visible as earth beneath SCP-1730 begins to give way. Mobile Task Force Alpha-20 Holy Divers enters the site near the crumbling power station. The group of survivors comes into view and are immediately moved towards the access point and then away from the site by members of MTFA-20. As the rest of the task force members are pulled away from the site, several transmission reaches site command, originating from Tau-5 Anru. Tau-5 Anru and Z9 Hollis are standing in front of the thresher device, which roars with activity behind them. They are firing their weapons at an encroaching black mass in front of them, 
which is punctured by streaks of fire. In the background, the servine entity can be seen can be seen tearing through the black tendrils with its antlers. As long rods of flame metal streak across the room towards the black entity, Hollis Hollis turns towards the camera and is slowly laughing, firing her weapon openly. She has removed her helmet. The helmet of the machine behind them gr grows noticeably louder, eventually overtaking all other sounds in the room. Shrieks of electricity arc across the ceiling above them. She smiles and turns towards Anru. He looks down to find her torso has been destroyed by a jet of flame. As Anru slumps to the side, the last shot of a satanine Hollis laughing hysterically and wildly firing her weapon as an enormous machine behind her begins to glow bright white. There is a flash, and the transmission ends. Outside is an MTF A20. Continues to move. 1370 researchers and personnel to safety. There is a def deafening, crackling sound, and a loud, loud hum fills the air. The area around the site begins to visibly distort, as if being seen through the water, and then suddenly SCP-1730 is gone. In this place is an immense immense crater over one kilometers in diameter. No other transmissions are received from within the site. No other anomalous activity is detected. End log.